Next question is from Tiffy Leap. As a trainer, how do you keep yourself from getting burnt out, especially emotionally? Oh, well, that's that you know, this is a good question because yeah, this happens. If you're a trainer and you're so married to your client's results and you're so married to the fact that your clients got to do what you say, you're going to be screwed. Yeah, because ha- more than half the time you'll fail. The, the cli- <laughs> clients, a fact. they're not going to do what you want yeah. all the time. Sometimes they're going to work out half-ass or they're going to cancel or they're going to do what you tell them and then they're not going to do what you tell them and it's going to happen a hundred times over and over again and you're going to want to get to the point where you're going to be like, I actually, I used to get trainers tell me this all the time and it used to make me laugh. They come up to me like, I want to fire my client. I'm like, okay, yeah. well, why? Why do you want to fire your client? Because they just, you know, they do the meal plan and then they don't. Or they tell it and then they don't. They're not taking this seriously. I only train serious people. I'm like, yeah. okay. I've told them the same thing like a hundred times. Yeah. I'm like, like yeah. you need- Welcome to the club. Yeah, you need to relax. First of all, you're not going to help them by firing them. Now, there's, of course, clients, if they no-show, you, and then you need to respect your time, that's totally different. But if they're showing up to their workouts, that's one big step that they're doing. And so you need to chill out with the whole, I'm going to fire my clients if they don't- Take me seriously because I only t- train serious clients. Like that's it's uh, silly. It's it's like pretentious. You will you will burn yourself out if you have that attitude. So number one, be okay. It's their goals and their life, and you're the guide. You help them, but they make the choices. You have to be okay with the choices that they make. Here's the second part. This this one was a big one. Um, if you don't really love people and enjoy talking to people and enjoy hearing their stories and love hearing about their lives and asking them questions, you're gonna have a tough time as a personal trainer. Because you're going to be training, if you're successful, six to eight people a day. So that's six to eight hours uninterrupted. You're on working with someone. And if you can't deal with different personalities, different stories, different stresses, because they're going to tell you about their husband and their wife and their job and their kids. They're going to tell you about why they don't want to do this, why they do want to do this, how they feel. If you don't love people so much that you don't find that entertaining – um, it, it's going to suck to show up to work because oh, you're, yeah. you're going to have to hear all this stuff and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't want to hear so-and-so. You're going to get vested in each one of them. Yes. And, and I, I went through a period of this and it mainly it was because I was stacking so many clients back to back to back to back. And I was just in, in the zone of I'm going to just get as many in as possible, many reps as I can. You know, I'm going to try my best to make a, a career out of this. And so I was, I was just focused on trying to get – uh, you know, the work in when I could. And that's when I started, when, when you start to build this feeling of, uh, you know, feeling burnt out, you got to kind of reassess now. Okay. Uh, like how, if you've done your time and this is something that you're doing, you might want to reevaluate your business plan. And so that's something that I went through and started to start to think about how I could provide better service. Cause if I'm feeling burnt out, I'm that's going to be a reflection mm-hmm. of what I'm bringing in now to each one of my clients and my service is going to drop on some level. And so I had to, I had to really recognize that and, and sort of like restructure the whole thing to where it allowed for op- more opportunity uh, for free time for me, which is important. You have to think about yourself too. Uh, to get my workouts in, to just have moments where I could think and and plan and uh, think about my business outside my business. Uh, and so that meant a, a reduction in clients. But now to survive, I need to bring my rates up a bit. And so there's that whole process of sort of changing and altering uh, your business plan and, and gear it more towards what's going to benefit your lifestyle. No, that's a good most. point. And I also used to love uh, the conversations that we would have. And I would look forward to learning from the clients that I trained all the time. And so they would come in and I think to myself, what can I learn from so-and-so? Oh, he's been in business for 20 years and he's successful. I'm going to ask him a bunch of business. Oh, that's a doctor. Yeah, they're mentors I'm ask to you. That's oh, how I looked at it. I used to love it. They come in and I used to feel guilty sometimes. Even when I trained them and stuff, I'd be like, man, I just learned a ton in that hour yeah. talking to so-and-so about investment or talking to so-and-so about this particular surgical procedure that I'd never heard of before or whatever. Um, so, and that made it just fun. Whenever they show up, I'm like, oh my God, I can't yeah, wait to, to ask have them. Fun. Absolutely. Well, I'm glad Justin, you went the direction you did because I, I have a different opinion, I think, than Sal does on this and that's... Uh, I would take ownership as this is this is my cue to myself. I need to be a better business operator. Um, if I'm getting burnt out and I'm dealing with a lot of these clients that I don't like to train, we you, there's a massive pool of people that you you, we, you can reach. Um, we are we are fishing in a huge sea of all different types of clients, 
And if I like a certain client, but then I find myself, I keep getting these clients that are making me feel burnt out, then I need to be a better business operator and attract the people that I want to train. And so this was my, because this happened to me. I definitely like got uh, burnt out. And the burnt out feeling was that of frustration, because the truth is, you know, uh, being a good trainer is a lot like being a good baseball player. Uh, you're, you know, the, the greatest baseball player still bat under 500. I mean, you're, it's just statistically speaking, you're not going to get all of your clients' results. That's just part of it. But if you want to attract more people that are serious about the results, that are consistent with the things that you're telling them, and work with just them, then you got to get to a place uh, where you have so much demand as a, a trainer that you can turn away all the people that, that are. That's the important point because yeah. the complainers were the trainers that didn't have that. That's right. They mm -hmm. didn't. They and I'm like, you have you can't be picky and choosy. That's right. Because you're looking for more clients. Exactly. Yeah. So get to a place where you can say no. You know, and and then once you get to that place, you start to learn. I mean, obviously, you've been doing this for a long time. I can sit down for an hour, I, and to this day, I get people offering me ridiculous money to train them and turn and, and turn it down because it's not worth my time because I already know what kind of person they're going to be just by having a conversation yeah. 45 minutes to an hour in. So even though the dollar amount may sound appealing to me, I care also about my mental health and not feeling burnt out. So I don't want somebody who is going to pay my bill, but then I'm going to be constantly having to text and remind, and they're going to give me excuses every time, and they're not going to. Those are my th these people are your your walking billboard. So I want all my clients to see phenomenal results and sing my praises because I've changed their life. But they got to be ready to want to change, and so I would I would build my business to a place where. I can only take I want to take on the people that I know are really ready to change. Not just the people that are willing to spend the money. There's a lot of people that are in a place financially that they 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 know that they can afford a personal trainer and it's the cool hip thing to do, or they know, oh, I don't know a lot about that, so I'll just hire somebody. But they haven't made the 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 commitment to themselves to actually change their behaviors. And if those are the people that I want to help out, and I needed to get to a place where I could turn down all the other clients, and for for these reasons exactly, not because like oh I'm a dick and I can't I I couldn't find a way to help that person. No, it, it can become very exhausting when you're training six to eight hours back to back to back to clients, and more than fifty percent of them are half-assing their their attempt to get to their fitness goals. So okay, I need to get better at my as an operator and get my level of training up to where there's a high enough demand for me that I can start to be a little more picky and choosy about the clients that I decide to help out are the ones that are already in that place where they want to help themselves. And boy, did that make a huge difference in me feeling burnt out because I, I still to this day, and that's why I still will always have one or two clients I'm helping, is I, st I love to help somebody who is ready to help themselves. Yeah, That is looking just for guidance. That it's just like, Adam, I need. To, I don't. I don't go to school for all this. I didn't learn all this. All this stuff, and I respect your opinion on it. I just need you to kind of guide me. Mm -hmm. Tell me this. Tell me that. And I'll execute. I'll follow. I'll learn. I'm eager to learn. I love helping someone out like that. It's still very rewarding for me. So, get to a place with your business that you have that opportunity to say no to somebody who's not ready yet, and say yes to all the people that are ready to make that change.